Hey, the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, Pray without ceasing. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Allergies. And I know we already did a lesson on this before. But, you know, when you go to a Christian bookstore, on the sh shelves are just books and books and books about prayer. And the two important things we have is studying our Bible, which is found in the Bible, and then praying without ceasing. And this list that Paul has here, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. Now, prayer is not always asking God. Prayer is not always about yourself. Now look down here, he has, <clears throat> brethren, pray for us. And you can never say you don't have time to pray. Pray without ceasing. You can be driving your car. You can have, like I said before, prayer in school, but you know, you're not allowed to pray. You, you you know, Jesus said, don't stay on the corner and pray like the hypocrites. Go off into a secret closet, room. But you can pray in the classroom secretly. Just let me pray. Let me show you an example how to pray in a classroom <clears throat> or somewhere where you can't pray. Okay. You can drive down the road and pray. Do you look at your Facebook posts or your social media? I learned, and I'm, I'm trying right now to pick it up. I'm doing a little bit better. But when you're scrolling down Facebook, okay, let me bring up the thing. When you're scrolling Facebook, all right, I'm going to use my Facebook when it comes up. All right. I'm sorry for publicly using your names, but this is my Facebook. Pray for Dan and Joyce. Pray for Matthew Williams, Brother Bob. Okay, when you could, Jim Peterson, pray for him. And when you come across someone's name in, in a feed, pray for those persons. And when if you read their posts and there's names in it, pray for the people that are in the post. You know, if Christians were more faithful to speaking to God than they are speaking on their cell phone, and it ridiculously as I live and go through this world to see where people they, they can't put that phone down. And yet they'll say, oh, I can't pray to God. We were in the doctor's office a little while ago, and we're in the thing, and that woman's sitting there, she has her phone. She's called up to the window. And she's no sitting down. She's already got the phone ready to go. And she's called back to the window. And she, before she even sits back, she's got the phone. You go to a restaurant and you may have a group of people and they're all on this stupid phone. Why can't we be more in prayer to God than the cell phone? And I think when we get to heaven for the saved and when you get to hell, you're lost. I think we're, God is going to measure your prayer time and your cell phone time. Which is more? Which has more minutes, prayer or your cell phone? And if your cell phone has more minutes, uh, that's in great air. Because when you're on your cell phone, you're not talking to God. You got your phone out? Are you trying to find someone's name in, in, in the contact? 
pray for the context as you're moving down to find that name. Can't sleep at night, as I said before. Pray. We're called to pray without ceasing. Many churches have a, a, a prayer night during the week, and many do not. But anytime, any night, any morning, any afternoon, Daniel prayed three times. I think David said he prayed three times. Are you giving God at least a breakfast, a lunch, and a supper? Or dinner, whatever you call a prayer time. Are you soaking in the tub, just relaxing, and this feels, oh, that's a hard day. And, and you're not doing nothing, you could be praying. Speaking to God, and you don't have to be oral like I am right now. You can reach God in silence. You can reach God speaking. You can sing a song to God. Sing, make up a song out of your heart. That's it's speaking to God as we were to take a cell phone. God is the original cell phone, the cordless phone, before this junk came out. God was the first wireless. You don't need no wires to talk to God. <clears throat> and it's forever charged by the Holy Spirit. God, when you're speaking to God, your, your bars are not going to go down to nothing. They'll stay high and ready to go. I use my cell phone. I make one phone call and my battery's almost ready to be dead. The battery never dies when you're speaking to God. And too bad that some some people, you know, that they, they use these phones all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's sorry that some Christians, their cell phones have no dust on it. And yet their Bibles and their prayer life has inches and feet of dust. Jesus prayed. His earthly ministry, he prayed to the Father. And he was kept busy. <clears throat> Do you know that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is praying for us Christians presently? Are you putting all cares of yourself and your family and your friends and your co-workers and your church into the hands of God by speaking to God? Are you putting all cares and concerns before God about others and yourself? On Saturday mornings, uh, we have a farmer's market already throughout the week. I begin praying Sunday. I'm thanking God Saturday and, and thanking God Sunday and reaching out. If he's a Terry, <coughs> next Saturday. Bible reading and a prayer life is very much very much lacking. You know what night at the church is least attended? Prayer night. You know what set the world on fire during the Philadelphian church age? Prayer. There are stories of hours in prayer. And I'm sorry, I, I can't say ours. There's a famous preacher, I don't I don't recall his name. But when he was preaching, they say, Well, what is your success of your church? 
And the usher, somebody took him down into the basement of the church while the message is going on. And he opened up a door in the room in the basement, and there were a bunch of men on their knees praying. Another another preacher who had who had gone gone home to glory and his house was you know you could go visit his house or his office where it was his church and they would bring you to a room and in the room in the floor there were two worn away grooves where that preacher knelt before God. In prayer. Now, if there's anything, say, Stella, you're holier than now, you know, who do you think? I don't have such a prayer life. And I'm sorry. And I pray anywhere and everywhere I can when I think about it. But I don't have a steady prayer life. And I'm always reaching out to God. I'm always thanking God. I'm always making requests for others for God. But I don't do it enough. You say, how much is enough? Tell me how much you pray without ceasing is. Tell me the time period of that. Well, I don't know. If you, if you read your Bible and you read your Bible daily, put names on pages. You read a daily proverb, put, put some names in the proverb. You have a church prayer list? Do you have a church directory? Pray. I guarantee you can think about somebody other than yourself and yourself, even in a convalescent caring. I mean, you meet nurses and doctors and other patients you can pray for. Why not put the cell phone down and pick up your prayer to God? And speaking to God. That's what prayer is. It's speaking to God, talking to God. And you'll be amazed, and I know this for sure, you'll be amazed on how he answers and speaks back. Don't expect an audio voice from God. But he'll answer your prayers. He'll talk with you. But get out amongst the world and the nonsense and the hustle and the bustle. And even in the nonsense and the hustle and the bustle and all the things of the world. And in quiet time and pray without ceasing. There's tons of books on the market. I, I get a couple Christian books. Christian, whatever you want to call it, warehouse, catalog kind of thing. And there's just pages and pages about prayer. We don't need books and novels about prayer. We need to get praying. 